Breaking generational cycles can be very tricky. And I don't use the word generational curses because I don't believe in curses. I think that the only thing that can curse you is yourself. So a generational cycle, it really is a cycle that you have to break. And it starts from your elders. And I really didn't realize this until I had a conversation with my father. And he had probably unintentionally shared, um, or intentionally because he talked to me a little bit about it, but he had never opened up about this, just some feelings that he had towards one of his brothers for being left out of something a long time ago, probably even before I was born. And um, it was really profound to me to really connect the dots and understand why they don't have such a great relationship, although it's very surfacey. See, my uncles and aunts, they had a very surf surface relationship. The brothers and sisters that came from my grandfather, they were very phony to each other. They would only get together in trauma. What they would do is get together to talk and gossip and talk about irrelevant things that really didn't matter in the world. And that's how they got by. And it's no fault to them. It's not like, oh, they're bad people or they're ignorant people. They're actually all very intelligent. But it really stemmed from my grandfather, who was a loving man and was well-loved, but he had not done the best job in ensuring that his uh, kids had a connected relationship. And so they were competitive with each other and um, they didn't get along. And so after he passed away, it really showed the disconnection between them. But one thing that uh, my father was saying was that it was a cycle. He didn't use the word cycle, but it was something that went on with them. And after my grandfather passed, he's keeping his distance. But what he didn't really see or realize or maybe admit was that he also created that cycle with his kids. And keeping us competitive against each other, choosing sides or choosing this daughter over that daughter or this son over that son, it created a competitive nature within his children. And now none of us have a good relationship. None of um, my siblings have good relationships with each other. And it's either if they do talk, it's very surfacey and they get together and they gossip or they talk about somebody. The best thing that they do together is talk about somebody and laugh at somebody. And I've always been uncomfortable with that because why are we talking about that? Why don't we talk about ourselves and say, hey, how can we build together? How can we create? You're, you're really good at this. We should create a business. Are you really good? You want to go travel somewhere? We don't have those conversations. We talk about Nancy and why she, why she got fucked up hair or, you know, stupid stuff like that. It's irrelevant and it's not conducive to our growth. And that those are the cycles that we are responsible for breaking. So maybe we cannot have great relationships with our parents. But where I am, I forgive my father and I forgive my mother for being neglectful, for being mean, for not knowing how to properly raise me. And not knowing how to properly love me. But I know how to properly love me. See, through that whole process and them not loving me, I learned how to properly love me. So I don't rely on them or my relatives, you know, to show compassion and love for me because I can give that love to myself. But what I have to do with my offsprings is show them that their siblings are their best friends. Their siblings are God's gift to them, a built-in best friend. And for whatever they're on, wherever they are, they always have their best friend and that's who they look out for. They don't compete with them. There is no competition and they never choose a friend over them because at the end of the day, that's who they go home to. That's who they eat with. That's who they break bread with. That is their family and no one else, you know? And I think that with generational cycles, it's really important for us to focus on our children and to focus on the youth in our family because those are the ones that aren't really tainted. You know, if you can get to them without the interference from their corrupt parents, then everything will be good. I don't have a good relationship with my family, unfortunately. I, I have very 
Um, it's a very disappointing situation. I don't even call them my family. They're just my relatives. I have absolutely no respect for them because they don't know how to treat people with respect. They live off of money and how money is going to better their lives. But see, they don't understand that that money is only temporary. And after that money is gone, because God is going to take it away from them. Because what we're really on this earth to do is to love, to build community, to grow, to cultivate the land, to be good people for one another, not rely on some intangible, which is just another form of energy and money. You know, that's not going to get us by. That's not going to grow our communities. So what we have to focus on is getting away for those, from those toxic individuals as best as we can and not even associate with those toxic individuals. Even if they are your parents or your uncles or your aunts, your mom, your sisters, your brothers, you have to separate yourself and find your own community. And sometimes that community is just you and you have to be your own best friend. And if you create children, you have to be their best friend. You have to show them how to love, how to give and how to be, even when people are horrible to them, still love and still show respect. So I applaud you if you are really working at breaking that generational cycle. I've seen it and I know that we can do it.